Hey everyone, my name's Rowan, and today I'm going to show you how you can start and stop your Azure containers from within .NET code. I'm going to call that through Azure functions. So the very first thing I'm going to show you is a container app we're going to use just as an example for this. Now, this is from another video of mine. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, we're not actually going to worry about what the app is for this. We're just going to note that this is a container instance, and we are going to start with this in the stop state. So we're going to start by hopping over to Visual Studio. And this is the base function app we've got. Now, this is the stuff that gets you out of the box. We've got authorization level anonymous, and we've got that with a HTTP trigger, which is what we're going to be using for this. So what we want to do is you want to start by going to tools and going to manage NuGet, and we're going to browse, and we're going to look for Azure Resource Manager Container Instance. Now we've got the package installed. We are going to change this around a bit. So we're going to actually call this start, rename the function itself to start, Let's just strip all of this stuff out because we don't actually need this. And the response message is just going to be started OK. So to run this, what we actually need to do is we're going to need to create a service principle. Now, I'm going to just sort of run through this really quickly. I do have another video um, showing how to do this. It's part of another video all about how to manage a settings in Azure properly. Um, I'll put a link down below specifically to the bit where we create the service principle just so you can sort of run through it slower if you need to do that. Over in Azure, we're going to go to Active Directory, App Registrations, New Registration. Just give it a quick name. Uh, nothing else really needs to change. We're just going to hit Register there. And this is just so we've got something we can use to authenticate the application against in Azure, um, just so we can manage the permissions um, without having to use like a user or some other kind of authentication method. Now that we've got this, what we're going to do is go back to our resource group. We want to go to Access Control. And here we can manage all of the different um, access levels for the resources in this resource group specifically. So we're going to hit add and we're going to add a role assignment. So what the actual role we're going to add is a privileged administrator role. We're going to add contributor. Now there are all kinds of different specific roles you can add here because you ideally want to give your function app in this case or our service principle the minimum amount of permissions required to do its job. You don't want to give it extra stuff um, just, just for security reasons. Unfortunately, um the best we can get for container instances is reading which ones we have with the generic reader role there isn't really a role in here at the moment to specifically manage container instances uh, like modifying what they are so unfortunately we're going to have to go for contributor which just handles everything um gives us pretty much full permission apart from like um user management on the group itself so it, it's it gives way overkill to what we need but unfortunately it's it's the minimum we need so for this, uh, we create a service principle. So we're going to select, and we're just going to search by RL, and this will give us the one we just made. And we'll hit select. And everything else can stay the same. We'll just hit review and assign. And there we go. We've assigned our service principle the permissions it needs to connect to and manage this resource group and everything inside it. So one last thing, we'll quickly go back to the app registration itself. And we're going to need to copy down the application, the client ID, the directory or tenant ID. And if we go to certificates and secrets, we're going to need to create a new client secret just to act as a password. And we need to copy the value from that. Now, back over on Visual Studio, we're going to go to local.settings.json. And in the values, we're going to add some new ones. We've got our client ID, client secret, and our tenant ID. So we're going to paste these in. And we'll just save that and go back to our function now. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to put in this. So we're going to read our tenant ID, client ID, and client secret from the configuration itself. So in order to do this, we have to inject the configuration in a constructor. And um, we need to take the static off of these to make that work. And here, we'll just have my configuration, configuration, and we'll also put it up here and set it there. So now we have access to the configuration um, injected into our constructor. And the last thing we do here is we set up a new client secret credential. So we just need to import. You can do this with NuGet, or I just did it with the shortcuts. You get Azure.identity here. Let's remove the extra stuff we don't need. Azure identity is what we use to get the secret credential here. The reason that we have this, the reason that we are specifically talking to a service principle is because when we start looking through the Azure resource manager library, it needs some kind of like user or something to base its subscriptions off to figure out what resources does this entity have access to. So now that we've got a credential set up, we're going to put in this code here. So let's run through it. 
We've got our ARM client. Now this is our Azure Resource Manager client. This is what's going to talk to Azure and we pass the credentials in here. We're going to get a container. Actually, let's rename this. And it's actually a container group. So we're going to get our container group resource and we'll add the import for that as well. Resource Manager container instance specifically. So it's going to look for a container group. Now a container group and a container instance are basically the same thing. A group is a whole collection of different containers you can run, but they all run at the same time. They all run off the same image. Um, you can't sort of start one and stop one. Um, they're just handled as sort of one bulk thing. So if you want two different container images running, you need to have two separate container instances to manage that. And the get container group resource function takes in a resource identifier, and then this takes in an ID. So our resource ID, actually, this is one I took from another example. So we're going to get rid of that and let's have a look at where we find that. So we're going to head over to Azure again and our container instance. And on the left hand side, we'll go to properties. And if we scroll down a bit, it actually has the resource ID here. And we're literally just going to copy the whole thing here. And in here for now, we're just going to paste this in. Let's not worry about storing secrets or anything special. And so finally, this line here, the container group we've got, we're now going to call start async. And that's going to start the container itself. If you pass in completed, the asynchronous call here is only actually going to finish once the container group itself has started. And so finally, we're going to just return our new object result. And we're just going to hit run. And now that's running, we're going to go to a new tab. We're going to paste in a uh, local host, our port 7078 API start, and we'll hit enter. And this will take quite a few seconds to actually get going because it's doing the starting of the container in the background and it's waiting for it to complete before it comes back to us. And there we go. We got our started OK response back. So if we go back to our Azure tab and hit refresh on this, and now we can see that it's in our started state. And now the next thing we're going to do is add the stopping functionality into it. So if we go back to Visual Studio, and because this stuff is bulky and it's very generic and repeatable, uh, we're going to extract the method, get client, so we can minimize that. And now what we want to do is copy this and we're going to paste it here and we're just going to rename all this stuff to make it stop based. So we've renamed all these things. And the last thing we have to do here is change it to stop async. And it actually doesn't take anything in. And now we can just hit run again and back over in our browser. We're going to go to the call we did before and we're just going to change this to stop on the end. And you'll notice this time it passed pretty much straight away. And if we refresh this one here, there we go. It's in a stopped state. It could start again. So there we go. It's pretty quick and easy to do. We've set up our Azure function to start and stop our container instance when the function itself is called. If there's anything similar you'd like to see, just let me know in the comments below or send me a message and I'll see if we can put something together for that. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for watching.